So once you've got that already installed and everything's good to go and you know you're golden at that point, you're going to want to go into NVIDIA Inspector. This is just for people who want to get real geeky and nerdy and, and edit the settings specific for those games that they think could get a little bit better performance. Games like Fallout 4, Arma 3, uh, Battlefield. Some games just do not run decently at default. And in order to fix this, we've been given the tools to do what we need to to make them work to the best of our ability. One of these tools is the NVIDIA Inspector. NVIDIA Inspector can be downloaded by various different places. The most common one you'll find is GitHub. That's a very popular website. Um, I won't link that in the description. I'll let, leave it up to you guys to pick that out and find it. Um, it's not necessary for most users. Once you have it installed, however, it's really just a drag and drop. You basically get two different pop-ups. You get the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, which before their most recent update was a very common way of uh, using their driver editing settings. Now this is normally what we would look for. So normally you'd hit NVIDIA Profile Inspector and this will pop up. In other cases, the other actual NVIDIA inspector.exe will pop up this window. This window is just to give you a rough examination on which version of your video card, what drivers, what it's doing, you know, give you a quick over. Um, so basically, you know, I'm running a GTX 980 Ti. Um, it's that architecture for the GPU. It's that revision of the car. This is my BIOS version. It's pretty self-explanatory, you know. Um, a good thing to check out to see if you're running low FPS and what has sometimes been the case in my scenarios that I've played with on my computer. If you see this right here, go from 3.0 at 3.0 dot or times one or times two or times four even, I believe it's only times two or times four. That means that your PCIe interface on your motherboard has downclocked itself because your CPU cannot handle a multi-GPU setup. If that's the case, I recommend upgrading your CPU for the most optimal performance. However, the difference between the two generations of 3.0, 2.0, and the difference between the you know four point four times and you know 16 times or eight times even, um, there isn't very much of it. It's not interchangeable. There's not much loss of performance. I personally have seen a loss of performance because I played a fairly high resolution. Um, this will show you the bus width of the card itself. This will show you the type of memory, GDDR5X for Hynix, um, and the amount of VRAM you have dedicated to your card. Keep in mind that as of right now with DirectX 11, your GPU's memory is not pooled together. If you have two cards with 600, 6 gigabytes, which is 6,144 megabytes, you will only have 6 gigabytes. That is it. You do not get 12, you do not get 16, you do not pass go, you do not go to jail. It is 6 gigabytes. That's what you get. When DirectX 12 comes out, that may be a different story, but I won't speculate on that at the moment. This will show you the driver you just installed. Once that has been installed, you know, you'll see it pop up here and you'll see the default clocks and, and all this cool stuff down here and even the boost clocks, which is NVIDIA proprietary. And even the temperature is in here somewhere. Yeah, right here. Um, that's just the general overlook. It's a lot like GPU-Z if you've ever heard of that tool. It's also very useful. And we'll show you both cards down here. You can go between. Um, for those of you that want to risk overclocking, I won't recommend this, but this is also a tool that may help you if you're having discrepancies between multiple uh, overclocking utilities. For those of you who do use this, this will give you the overclock for each individual performance level state that your video card will be in. Uh, P3, which is P0, is the turbo state that it goes into when you play games. This will show you the default clock, the overclock that it gives you, the offset for the memory clock, the overclock that you have for that, the power target and temperature target for what you have set, the temperature target, the voltage, and the overvolt. Now, I don't recommend screwing with any of these unless you actually actually know what you're doing. There are other more user-friendly tools like um, 
MSI Afterburner, um, Asus has, Raj has their own version, um, EVGA Precision, all of these are very good tools to use, uh, in particular to overclock. But, let's get to the tweaking. So, when you initially load up NVIDIA's Inspector, um, you're going to get a page like this. This is going to be where, you, you know, the action happens. This is for the base profile. Now, for some of you, this is one of those things that... Now, for some of you, this is going to be basically where you're going to want to get overwhelmed and, and don't know what to do and start messing with stuff. Don't. That's what I'm here for. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about all of these. So, let's start off with SLI bits under the compatibility. Um, this is where, in a lot of games, let's find one. Uh, so, for some games, in this particular situation, Arma 3, will have custom compatibility bits for SLI. These are bits of code that NVIDIA has set aside, particularly for this game engine and this rendering engine, and uh, this is what works. This code is what works best with that particular game. You'll see that some games use the same stuff. Uh, Crisis, Arma 2, Take on Helicopter, a bunch of these will use the same damn stuff. Uh, there will be separate SLI compatibility bits. You know, this is the default. This is for DirectX 10 and 11. For games that have DX12, this will be for DirectX12. And when you, you know, sometimes you can tinker around with this. Once you get a little bit used to it, you can start to tinker around with it and see if there are other games that uh, run better with other games' codes, for instance. Fallout 3 used, or Fallout 4 used the uh, Arkham Origins or Arkham Asylum uh, bits. And that was, you know, it worked really great. But then they came out with an official one, so you use the official one. So. Stuff like that will happen occasionally. Uh, you'll see online some people will post bits that may or may not work, and that's where you put them in to see if they work. Um, let's start moving on here. So sync and refresh. So this this is a very useful tool for games that have a set limit, or if you have a, ref, a monitor that has a low refresh rate, like 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Um, for games like Skyrim, you don't go above 60 because the game's engine is tied to the FPS. If you go above 60 FPS in Skyrim, shit starts to get crazy. Um, frame rate limiter is what you would use. So if I wanted to keep my game at 30 FPS, I would use 29.5, and that's where it would limit it. 30 FPS max. If I wanted to limit it at 60 FPS, I would put it at either 58.6 or 59.5. The reason for this is you need a small buffer of a, p a few frames so that you don't get screen tearing. That's basically, you know, just what you would normally use. I personally don't use it for a lot of my games, just those, that one and maybe Fallout and a couple others. Uh, this, these settings are particular to G-Sync monitors. Uh, G-Sync is a feature that NVIDIA has. It's a proprietary feature that they have on some of their monitors that enables smoother frame rates and smoother uh, imagery without screen tearing and a few other things. So you're going to want to skip those. They're not really useful to you unless you have a G-Sync. Um, max pre-rendered frames. Max pre-rendered frames is what the NVIDIA card or drivers tell how many frames to send off to the CPU to get them pre-optimized uh, pre to send off to the GPU to render and send back, basically. This well, if you don't have a beefy CPU, leave it alone. Leave it as the use the 3D application set. Some games it's okay uh, for 120 hertz refresh rates. If you get up to 120 FPS in game, this is helpful. Um, it may make your game a little more smoother, but there does have there is input lag that occurs when using the setting if you don't watch how high you set it. Preferred refresh rate. This is the refresh rate you want your monitor to use. Uh, highest available. And, you know, what, you know, is basically going to be 60 FPS if you have a 60 hertz monitor, 30 FPS if you have a 30 hertz monitor, I don't even think those exist. Um, and, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, I'd say you leave it as is. Don't touch it. Triple buffering. This is a very useful tool. It basically gives you a higher rendering performance without using really any resources. I always recommend turning this on. This, this doesn't affect anything in performance-wise. 
just gives you better performance. Vertical sync. So you may notice in some games you're playing, you start to get you know jagged edges, or not jagged edges, but your your screen starts to look like it's it's cut in half sometimes, or random lines appear in it. This is known as screen tearing. Screen tearing is very annoying to people who can see it. Some people don't really see it. Some people do. I see it. Um, when you get screen tearing, that means that your hertz or your refresh rate is, or your frames are going above your refresh rate. And when your frames go above your refresh rate, it usually gets a very jagged and unstable uh, image. So what you want to do in order to keep it from going above that set FPS and keep it to your monitor's refresh rate is turn on V-Sync. V-Sync works in a few ways. So you have the force on, which will give it a standard uh, hertz ratio of whatever your monitor has. So if it's 60 hertz, it'll be 60 FPS. Um, half refresh rate will say if it's 60 FPS, go down to 30 FPS, you know, one third, one fourth, and so on and so forth in that process. I recommend for some games turning that on. Um, it's necessary to make it a nice, smooth experience. Um, other games, it's not necessary. Vertical sync smooth AFR behavior is if you're using alternate frame rendering, which is a form of SLI rendering. This is useful for if you still get those weird screen tearing events while using SLI, and for some reason vertical sync isn't helping. Try turning this on. It may do it. Um, this is how your vertical sync works. So there's standard and adaptive. Adaptive only limits the refresh rate when it sees it goes over by a certain amount, um, and it will reduce it back down to that hertz ratio. Standard is a flat rate, always going to be on, never turns off. This adaptive only turns on when you need it to. I recommend adaptive unless it doesn't work. Um, Anti-aliasing is very particular. It will really tank your FPS, and I'm not going to go into it because I personally don't really use it. Um, for Armour specifically, it's not, it, you know, you got some custom values here. Don't bother with it. it it's particular to each game. Um, texture filtering. This is useful for certain games. Sometimes the anastropics uh, filtering or texture filtering in a game engine isn't the most optimized, and it brings down your FPS a little bit. So if you ever see a, a website recommending certain settings in anastropic filtering, uh, this is where you need to go to input them and make it work. This is basically what your NVIDIA control panel will use. Common, you know, ambient occlusion, multi-GPU, mixed GPU acceleration, all of this stuff. Uh, this is where your general usage from your GPU will, will get the most out of, honestly. So for multiple display sets mixed GPU acceleration, I recommend using compatibility performance mode. The reason for this is because this won't disable your secondary or third uh, monitors when you're in game. Um, it won't limit your performance to just your main screen. It won't you know, span performance to all of the other monitors. It will focus on whatever it needs to in the moment that it, things are rendering. Power management mode. Always turn, this by default is on uh, adaptive. Take it off of adaptive immediately. Always put it on prefer maximum performance. This is my personal opinion, but it's a very widely used one. And I got to say, this gets you a lot of performance for something by default. Uh, keep in mind, your GPU will heat up a little bit because it'll be, you know, full performance. Um, there's ways to fix that. You know, those tools I mentioned earlier, you know, you, GeForce, uh, or NVIDIA Inspector specifically in the overclocking will allow you to control your fans. Um, the EVGA inspector, um, or EVGA precision. A lot of these will allow you to edit your fan and see how close they'll go, uh, or how fast they'll go. And you always want to keep those relatively high. Keep mine at about 80% regularly. A lot of people will say, oh, that wears down your, uh, it'll wear down your stuff, your bearings on your fan. Honestly, you won't have your GPU for six plus years. Uh, even if you do, I don't think it'll make a difference. Um, threaded optimization, this allows your GPU to use your multiple threads on your quad core or 12 core CPU to render. This is a must. You've got to have this on. I highly recommend it. Um, I won't get into shader cap. Physics is an indicator that will be an overlay that will tell you whether or not a game uses physics or not. Don't bother with it. You don't need ambient occlusion usage on. You know, leave everything else on, basically. So, SLI. This is very specific to SLI people. This is where you will decide how you render and how your GPUs handle game. So, most games will use an auto, uh, 
auto select variant. You'll see this in all of the options. You see auto select. And you'll see a few other one, two, three, or four. This is how many cards you have. Keep in mind that if you set this to four, it will automatically go down to two if you have two cards, three if you have three cards, or four if you have four cards. That's just how this works. Um, certain Certain games and certain programs will run better on different types of rendering processes. So, by default, NVIDIA will predefine an, an auto select a set thing that is in the drivers that will work best with that game. Sometimes that's not always the best and most optimized. Another one you may be able to use is AFR. AFR is a very commonly used rendering protocol, it's what's used in a lot of DirectX 11 games. You don't really want to use um, AFR2 unless it's an older game. It runs better with DirectX 12, uh, 10 and 9, but you can still use it with modern day DirectX 11 stuff, and sometimes it does work. All this does is it'll either force your frames to render first on one or your first, second, or third card, depending on how you have it set up. So AFR2 will send your frames off to the second card. It will then render it first and hand it off to the first card. Sometimes that gives a performance boost for games that don't always see that second card. You're basically forcing a reroute. Very helpful. SFR, single frame rendering. This basically keeps it so that one card renders one half of your screen, the other card renders the bottom half of your screen. And that's kind of funky. Sometimes your cards don't always keep up with each other. I wouldn't recommend using it. Keep it between AFR and AFR2. SFR and this last one aren't really useful anymore. I, they're starting to get phased out. Uh, this is the same thing, but for DirectX 10. There's two, now, just because you set this one to DirectX uh, or AFR2 doesn't necessarily mean this one will use AFR2. If you run into a game that the engine sees as DirectX 10, then you may want to switch it to AFR1 and not worry about it anymore. Um, you can also set this to auto select. I usually keep them the same. This isn't a profile I set. This is the default that NVIDIA has set for Arma 3. This is the SLI rendering mode auto select. This is the same process as the other one. Um, so set it, this is basically the predominant one, though. So pick whichever one you get the best performance out of. Screw around with it. Test them. You know, go into different games. See which one works best for those games. And use them. And you know what? That's pretty much it today. Um, oh, let me know if you want me to do more. Um, Go ahead and like, subscribe, you know, get me out there. I'm trying to start off and enjoy my videos, first and foremost. Everybody have a nice night and enjoy your new FPS.